Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, never seen this talk before, have you? No, don't think so. Today I'm going to be talking, they're going to be a bit smaller cases because I'm just trying to get back in the swing of things. If you've seen the previous video, you know what I'm talking about. I don't feel like until I have a little bit more time that I can do sort of a deep dive into a massive case. I enjoy doing them, don't get me wrong, and I'm going to do one on... Is he called Dennis Raider? BTK Killer? I'm going to do one on him because I've read so much about him now. Someone, One of you guys actually suggested him. I've read so much on him, watched so many videos, but I just haven't been in the right headspace to do him yet. And that's going to be a big one. So I will do it. But these just to catch me up a little bit, get me back into the swing of it. I'm going to do shorter ones. I'm sorry if you don't like them, but every case is important, whether it is short or long and you know, they all need to be out there. So that's basically the plan. Just for a few videos, a few weeks, I'm sticking to one video per week until the new year. And then I'm going to go back to two because my channel sucks. <laughs> Genuinely sucks. So I really feel it would be beneficial to have the Monday, Friday, like I previously did, or even Monday, Thursday, whatever. Let me know what you guys think is best on that. Um, but I'm going to stick to one for now until the new year. That's my aim. That's my goal. We're going to get there, I hope. And hopefully I can get in front. And then by that point, I'll have... I'd rather be like a couple months in front if you catch my meaning. And then if anything ever crops up, at least then there's going to be videos on there kind of thing. I'm babbling again. Right. Yeah, that's the plan. Okay, that's what we're going to do. And today's case is on Mackenzie Cowell. Sadly, she was murdered and it was from a place where you would expect someone to be safe or like you would feel safe, I suppose. But that doesn't really mean anything these days because people get murdered inside of their own homes with the family sleeping downstairs. Yeah, don't even know that that has happened in some cases. It's The world we live in is just horrific, but yeah. Let's jump into her case. Mackenzie Nicole Cowell was born on the 1st of April in 1992. Now she was such a lovely young woman. She was very intelligent. She was going to high school and then went on to the high school's academy of her own design in Wenichi. Apologies if I've said that wrong, because I probably have. She was going to go ahead and study like cosmetology, beauty, things like that. It was her passion. She was a very pretty young woman. She ended up doing work as a model. She was also a dancer as well. So, you know, she was sort of having these part-time things. But what she really wanted to do was work in cosmetology. It was... Her parents had sadly had split up and they were living separately. This was in Orlando, Washington. And she would split her time between both parents, you know. She still had a really good relationship with her family and she would go from her mother's house to her father's house kind of thing. She had talent. She was full of life. That was until a fateful day on the 9th of February in 2010. And she was in college or university or whatever it is. Um, she said to her classmates that she was actually going to go out, take a 15-minute break, go outside and ask them if you had to sign out. So normally you would have to sign out. But if you're only leaving for not a long period of time, like 15 minutes, it's hardly anything really. So she figured that, you know, she might not have to. So she asked them if that was the case and then off she went. But she never turned up to her next class. She was caught on CCTV walking through the parking lot and heading towards her red car. She got in and she drove off. I don't know where she was planning on going because 15 minutes is not a long time. So it must have been somewhere very close. And then, of course, she didn't go back to class. She did not also go home later on. It was about 20 to 6 in the afternoon at this point and her dad was getting worried. Of course he was. She wasn't home yet and it wasn't like her. So he tried ringing her. Missed call. Mackenzie didn't answer. He left her a voicemail and waited for her to come home thinking you know she's lost track of track tra tra track of time <laughs> she's she's gonna be home soon her curfew was eight o'clock kind of thing you know she would not have come home after eight o'clock 
eight o'clock came and went and Mackenzie was still not home and he was already worried you know originally and that just sent him off the deep end obviously now I don't know whether he rang the police after this or what but he actually heard from the police that a car had been found basically this car was found about 40 miles away from where they lived and it was near a place called Mission Ridge it had some belongings in the car but the reg it had been abandoned and the registered owner was her father and so of course when the police found this car they figured that maybe it had been stolen it had been dumped or whatever doing a welfare check on him they rang him up and said we found your car and he but he knew that Mackenzie was driving the car so that was even worse then Mackenzie was nowhere to be seen inside of it was her clothes were in there too but her um cards and purse and phone I believe had gone missing of course at this point he's telling them that 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 his driver was da driving daughter was driving the car she was supposed to be home but she wasn't so they immediately began looking into her disappearance and launched an investigation they even sent out a helicopter to the area where the car was found tried to look around they ended up finding like one set of footprints away from the car but what they didn't know was who had made those footprints was it Mackenzie did something happen to her and that was somebody else only one person left that car so say I don't know if somebody had got in the car with her and kidnapped her for example um something must have happened before they got to that point because that one person left or if it, that one person was Mackenzie then she must be in the woods somewhere right she's got with that car she's wandered off why for status why on earth would she do that leaving behind you know certain things and taking some things and then just wander off it was very very odd so they were out there looking for her with helicopters and things like that anyway what they then did is they found some people in the area in the general area spoke to them obviously to see whether they'd seen anything and what they said was that they had seen like a thin man he had a dark hair dark coat and he was the one walking away from the car not Mackenzie and obviously that is terrifying because that means that well basically what I said initially was that somebody had taken her or her car but then she wasn't at the end destination where the car was dumped so where on earth was she four agonizing days would pass by for Mackenzie's family until some remains were found and sadly they were determined to be that of Mackenzie this was the 13th of February and they were found in the Columbia River so heartbreaking you know Mackenzie was getting into a car she was last seen she was nipping out for 15 minutes and she never came back they sent her body off for an autopsy she had blunt force trauma to the head she'd been strangled she had been stabbed in her neck which is brutal and just so violent and disgusting but she had not been essayed so it seems like that possibly wasn't the motive or at least if it was it never occurred so and she was murdered between half three and half four thought to believe thought to be the actual day that she vanished so yeah not only that a bit of a grim detail um whomever did this to Mackenzie actually tried to remove her arm as well and the knife was still found in that which is just very twisted but there you go they weren't successful but you know they did get a bit of good go which is beyond horrific like I don't know maybe they were trying to um what's the word I'm looking for oh my gosh amputate that's not probably not the right word but you know what I mean and then dismember maybe dismember is the word maybe dismember her body so that they could hide it better I don't know I don't know and then didn't really think that it would be as difficult as it was who knows anyway these people are sickos to take somebody's life like that they obviously are anyway Mackenzie did have a boyfriend and she had sent him a message saying hey before she vanished he replied with hey he was that was it then that was the end of the conversation that day he was cleared of any relation to Mackenzie's murder so that was one suspect well not really a suspect but you know you always have to look at everyone who's close to her and sort of rule them out so he was very quickly ruled out police were getting numerous tips people were calling in trying to help in any way that they could and this is when they actually heard of a name of a student that was attending the beauty school that Mackenzie was going to 
His name was Christopher Scott Wilson, and it was given in as, like, a tip. I believe it was a police informant that actually gave it in. Now that I'm thinking about it. Now, the thing that they... They don't just randomly spit out these names, okay? They they had a reason to spit out Chris's name, and that was because he was obsessed with death. Not only death, dead bodies, serial killers. He ended up working in a mortuary, and apparently... Don't know how true this was, or is, or even if it's true at all, but apparently had been heard of saying of how he liked to cut up the bodies and things like that, and obviously how Mackenzie was found. Not a mortuary, sorry, a funeral home. So yeah, a bit concerning, considering this case. Not only was he obsessed with serial killers, he was obsessed with fictional ones like Hannibal Lecter, Dexter, things like that. And he even had them tattooed on his body as well. Now, I'm not saying that this is all solid evidence to say that he did something to Mackenzie, you know, a lot of people like those sorts of things. Um, I mean, look what I do, for instance. But, yeah, there's like, I don't know, a sort of threshold to it and maybe he's teetering over the edge of that. Anyway, they looked at CCTV because obviously they had that of Mackenzie leaving. And so they looked at that and guess who was leaving 72 seconds after Mackenzie? Christopher, you guessed it, if that was who you guessed. If not, you're wrong. Sorry to tell you. They got... Christopher gave his DNA over willingly and next to Mackenzie's body was actually a piece of duct tape, like a bit away from her body. They got DNA off of that duct tape and you guessed it, it was a match to Christopher. So yeah, we're checking all of the suspect list boxes here on all the evidence. You need to charge someone with a murder. They were then able to search his car, get warrants and things, and when they did so, they found Mackenzie's blood in his boot. And there was it. He went to trial. And he actually went to trial because he rejected a plea deal, which I have no idea why. I genuinely don't know why they even offered him this, because it's silly and absurd. They offered to give him six and a half years if he pled guilty to Mackenzie's murder. He said no. He denied it. And so off to trial they went. Well, sorry, it was manslaughter, not murder. Yeah. Which... Why? Okay. Just after the they began selecting the jury for his trial, he actually did plead guilty to first degree manslaughter. As well as first degree robbery, obviously he took her mobile phone and things like that, and her cards. And then he got done for some second degree assault in an unrelated case. But he was sentenced to 14 years in prison with the liability of parole as part of like another plea deal that he accepted, which I don't know. Yeah, okay, I don't know, but there you go. Apparently he is coming up for parole soon. Let me just quickly have a look. Bear with me, because I forgot. Okay, so I can't actually find anything that anything to do with a pro, so I'm guessing it hasn't happened yet. It said it was supposed to happen this year, 2023. I suppose we've still got a few months left, who knows? But yeah, there's nothing on Google right now, but basically he did try to withdraw his guilty plea after this because he said that he didn't think he was get would get a fair trial. And that's the only reason he accepted the plea. But I mean, they rejected that. It's just frustrating. He only got 14 years as well after what he did to Mackenzie. And I guess that's because he was charged with manslaughter instead of murder. I don't know. I don't know how the justice system works. I don't think that's very fair. Especially since he like tried to withdraw the plea agreement as well. Basically, it was in exchange for a signed document saying that he'd caused the death of Mackenzie. But there you go. Anyway, I don't think that's fair. All right. I, I assume that poor Mackenzie's family will also think along the same lines. Did you know Mackenzie got a death sentence? So why should he get out for 14 years? Just my opinion. I'd like to know what your opinions on it is because I don't believe that's long enough at all. But there you go. That is the end of this case. If you guys have liked this video, give it a thumbs up if you want to. If not, there you go. Don't have to. Um, but yeah, that is the end of this video. Anyway, that's all I have today on the case of Mackenzie Cowell. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, bye.